glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, God. Um, let me just say to those behind me, the year ones, that they just need to be quiet. So please excuse me. Uh, year, I'm sorry, year one. You just need to keep it down, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. What I'm going to do, because this is perhaps our... our last teaching sessions as such because what we will find and I still don't know if Sister Blessing is here um, this month but from next month we're going to start our speaking and listening for um, so April, May um, bit introduced so I just need to make sure um, that we are wrapping up some things and one of the things that I have to admit it is a bit of a passion of mine is to ensure that anything that we teach anything we preach anything that we we um, that we deliver when it comes to the word of God that we are getting the richness of the word Right, that we're not just, it's easy to gain knowledge. You can, you read the word and gain knowledge, but there's more than that in the word of God. And um, our desire um, for, as a Bible school, and both Bible schools, ABC ourselves and London and South, because of the three Bible schools, is that we will really equip individuals, that they will develop in us a love of the word. And as we go into the word, that we will be skillful. And when I did the PowerPoints, I put on the background of it, in the watermark, I talked about the anointing flowing through. And nothing can replace that. That comes by making sure that we are listening to God, that we are hearing from him in our personal consecration time, that nothing... Um, takes that place nothing can do that um that's how the anointing of god will continue to flow but we can develop also skillfulness when it comes to our delivery and one of the things is how the people sometimes have asked me how do i study the word of god and i just wanted really at this last session um, to, to do something that I call developing skillfulness, going deeper. So um, the, 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 the material that I've sent you, I want us just to take our time and I want us to go through it because what we want to make sure is that whatever we do, whether we teach, whether we are preaching, it, we are going to have to study the word and there has to be a richness and a relevance in what we actually, in the content of whatever we deliver. Uh, and um, so what, what, what I've done, I've called, if we look at page one, one of the things I've said is that actually we need to be able to connect with those who we teach, or if you're called to exhort, or if you're called to preach, we need to connect with them. And, you know, in order to have this connection to the culture that surrounds us, I've called it, we've got to find the pain. And it's a great acronym when you're studying the word of God. The P for pain means problems. Everybody has a problem. Okay. We all, as human beings, there's a problem. So the P is for problem. Find the problems as you're reading through scriptures. Think about what problems people may be having that that scripture may be relevant for. Right? People have aspirations. So A is about aspirations. What are the aspirations of individuals, not only around us, but in the audience or whoever it is that we are with, that we are working with? So P for problems, A for aspirations. Then the I is for issues. There are many issues that um, that individuals and people and groups are facing in our world today. So what are some of those issues and what we are going to, what you're, you're studying to deliver, how does, how does 
the, the studying and how does the word relate and correspond to the issues. So we've got people I, I can't do that interaction because I can't hear you but the end is for needs we have a world that is full of needs and we want to make sure so you know that we are able to meet the needs of individuals through the word of God now if, we're, if our ministry whether in teaching or reading or whatever it is that we're doing you know, if it doesn't connect with the P-A-I-N of individual, then what we do will slide into insignificance and obscurity. It won't touch lives. And I am quite sure that you will agree with me that, you know, we don't want to just to be talking to people and it doesn't make a difference. Everything we do, we want to make sure. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Um somebody's trying to fix it for us so we can hear each other or oh, I can hear you so we need to make sure that you know there's a connection people receive thing because it's all now when we look at the bible it's a book of oh and and, and, and I'll talk about this much later there's everything that we need in the Bible, it's a book of psychology, you've got a book of sociology, economics, politics, physics, anthropology, you name it, it's there in the Word of God. And the principles there, the symbols, the codes it's used, it's timeless. And um, for those of us, we've got to realize, really, that the, whatever is there in the Bible, that it's great for all of us. So what I'm wanting us to, to have a look at and to, and to talk about here is that those who view the Bible exclusively just as a book of theology, what they are missing are the layers. So the first chapter is about layers and levels of understanding that's there. So there are layers and levels of understanding. It is not just a book of theology, right? And, it, and those layers and levels are in the form of solutions, strategies, and systems. So as you're studying the Word of God, that's what you're looking at. Just giving pausing to give time to write, okay? Yep. So we must realize that the Bible actually, you could say that it's written in codes. There's because there is so much there. There's so much richness that's there. And the codes are often here, and I, I'm sure in your broader study, you will notice that sometimes we talk about types. We talk about shadows, these words that can go into your into your blank spaces on page one. So we must realize that the Bible is written in codes, and the codes are often referred to as types, shadows. We talk about prefigures. We talk about allegories. We talk about metaphors. So let me say those again. We talk about types, shadows, prefigures, allegories, metaphors. And of course, we've got parable symbols and so much more. So what does that mean? For us, what it does mean is that there is so much there. Everything that we do, every 
time we read about people, practices, places and promises, they all have a deeper meaning and implication and significance than just the historic interpretation may suggest. And that and it's important really for us to know that and to understand it so that when we're going in, our hearts are opening to say, what else is there that I can glean from the word of God? Every time I read about a person, every time I read about a practice, every time I read about a place, every time I read about a promise, there's always a deeper meaning than what I see at the surface. There are deeper implications, there's deeper significance than just what I read. That's really important. And it will help us in what we do. If we turn over to page two, this is all about this session, about how do I study the word and what can I get into the word. I'm hoping that at the end of this session, your Bible reading and your Bible study will, will, will stir your heart and do what I call put fire in your belly. You'll, you'll just not want to put, I don't know if some of you are avid readers, you know, but there's some books you pick up and you just read it and you think, oh, I can't put this down. This is great. I want you to feel like that about the word of God, because what you're seeing and what you're receiving is more than just a very surface thing, because you will then transfer that to whomever you are delivering or you're speaking to. They will sense that you've got something there that and they will want it to. So, and talk about cracking the codes. So, if it's full of all of these things and that it can come alive with implications and applications and solutions for the pain in society, then we're going to look at what that means. So we've got to think to ourselves, how can I apply the ancient wisdom of the scriptures to contemporary issues? So when you're reading, you're thinking, gosh, there is, I know there's a lot here, Lord. How can I apply this to the issues that are around our world today? How can I see people or circumstances in the scripture? You know, while I apply a biblical solution to current problems, sometimes what we, we try to do, we're trying to um, get solutions for the world's problem from the world, but the Bible has solutions that's there. I remember um, it was earlier this week actually I was saying to someone we were talking about parenting and I says oh if only that this is me this is the person you know oh if only there was a manual you know that told you when you had a baby what to do we'd all get it right and immediately it came out of my mouth I thought I said to her Actually, there is. The Word of God is the manual that's there. Just that we don't read it enough to find, you know, what we need that's there. So the Bible speaks of, of every facet. And we've got to believe it in our hearts. Not know it in our heads, but believe it. The Bible speaks of every facet of human existence. So, so the, the blanks there are human existence and is relevant to every people, to all people everywhere at all times. So there we're talking about the Bible speaking to every part, every area of human existence. And I want you to say here that it is relevant to all people everywhere. So you think of the person, you think of their need. And yes, the Bible is relevant. You know, whether or not you are um, in a palace or whether or not 
you're in the on the street in a cardboard ball. Bible is still relevant. Everybody in between, it's relevant. So how are we going to date it? What we think about translation in the Bible, we've got to remember that the Bible is being translated as you study it. It's been translated several times into several languages in order to make its principles accessible to more people, okay? We've got to think about that. And our challenge, we've got to know now that our task is when we, what we're really doing is translating the Bible again. But this year, we're translating to the language of a modern culture so when you're planning and when i'm planning a bible study or when i'm planning and i'm reading the word of god what i'm doing i'm i'm reading what it says there and i'm translating that to make it appropriate to the culture that we're living in today okay and um, we've also got to understand that many of the biblical icons that we've got there they were all multilingual it's great. We don't even think about that. You know, they spoke Hebrew and Chaldean. They spoke Hebrew and Egyptian, depending on what era we studied. You know, there were Hebrew and Greek. It's kind of almost a spiritual language, while everything else represents an earthly language. And, you know, it means, therefore, that those individuals that were able to communicate spiritual ideas in earthly languages and so we have got to make sure we've got to become spiritual something that's there in the word of god and make it relevant to someone else gosh and that's a skill that the holy ghost gives us that's where the anointing comes. It enables us to do that and enables us to do it effectively. So when I said before that the, the thing with the scriptures, there's so many things in it. You know, I, I talked to you and I've written there, you know, first of all, it's a book of theology. And I want you to understand what we mean by that. What it does, it reveals the nature and plans of God. That's what theology does. It shows us the nature and the plans of God. So when we're reading it, the word of God, that's what we're getting there. You know, if we think about it as a book of physics, you know, I, 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 I have a wonderful testimony that... my yesterday and she's given her heart to God and she rang me to tell me this she's a scientist oh she was so pragmatic you know about everything and and I, when I was working with her I prayed when the last thing I did when I left when I retired was to give her a bible I said to her out of everything else that you need this you need read it and she's now given her heart to God, how wonderful it is, because the Bible is a book of physics, because it explains the origin and nature of the universe. So if scientists want to know, you know, they've got theories, we can go into the Bible and there are certain scriptures that we can pull out that explains the origin and nature of the universe. It gives them another perspective other than Darwin's theory. It's a book of psychology. We have many people, we talk about mental health issues that is pervading our society. Well, the Bible is a book of psychology. You know, it tells us, you know, that we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So it reveals the power of mind over matter, not in the way that the world thinks of it, but how the power of God can change our minds and bring transformation to human condition and human life and, you know, just changes and heal hurts. Anthropology. Some people just want to know about the true nature of humanity. 
Well, the Bible tells me all about that. So it reveals the true nature of humanity. Sociology, can you see all the ologies? Gosh, by the time we've read the Bible, we are great, you know, we, we're great educators. Oh yeah, I've got a degree in sociology. <laughs> Where did you get it? From the Word of God. You know, and most of the theories and thinking, when you dig deep, you know, you look and you say, oh yeah, it's a biblical, you know, a foundation. So sociology, we know it, it, the Bible reveals the origins and nature of civilization. Tells us where we come from and what we are supposed to be like. Yeah. In terms of economics, well, that's one of the things that people want. They want to know how their lives can prosper. You know, I'm not talking about being millionaires and billionaires, because if God, God has got that for you, he will, you know, place you. But I'm talking about flourishing and prospering where we're supposed to be. Well, the book shows us how both as individuals and as a nation, how we can prosper using biblical principles. Yeah, this is all around teaching and learning. And and then, of course, it's a book of redemption more than all, it, because it delivers hope for the soul and for society. And isn't, there, isn't that what people want? They want to feel that they have hope. And the book is all about that. So when we're looking at teaching and learning and all the things that we have done in this year, what we're wanting to do, and certainly what I want to wrap up today, is to give every one of us the tools to extract what I call punishment and the nutrition that's in scripture so that we're able to to, 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 to use them because we need to be able to do that. So let's go on to, to page three and let's talk about really the layers and the levels that are in scripture. And when we look at Isaiah 28 and verse 10 and Matthew 13, 10, 11, there, there, there's some scriptures that says for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Matthew 13, 10 says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered this Jesus and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not. I'd love to do a whole lot, to be honest, on parables and the unfolding and, and the way that God commits himself so much to us and do us a favor by giving parables because he never gives us what we uh, he never gives us more than what we are able to, to to take in so he gives us in ways that we can understand at that time with knowing that there's a deeper thing later on as we grow we can grasp it he's a great God he's a wise God what these scriptures actually passages introduce us to is the idea of layers and levels of understanding in the scripture and what they imply is that beneath the surface there are always deeper meanings and messages so in some cases the surface serves to it conceals the deeper meaning and what we've got to do as we're studying to deliver the word we must study and teach beneath the surface. Don't just give people the surface. They can read that for themselves. They want to know what, what's underneath it so that, you know, they can discover the whole counsel of God. That's what we need to do. Um, so we don't want to rob anyone of the riches that's there 
in the scripture because then they will not be edified. So there are three basic levels of understanding that's contained in the scripture. And we need to have these in the heart, uh, you know, while we are, while we are reading and studying. There's always a historical interpretation, right? And that is, if there's an understanding of the text in its original context. And we know that, that's what we see. Right, what it what it's meant to those who um, so what we're talking there the, the word that's missing there is original an understanding of the text in its original context that is what it's meant to who it was sent what it meant to whom it was sent when you read the prophets you read them there um, and there's a historical context there it was sent to israel what did that prophetic word mean to israel at that time but each of the scripture the other level of understanding is the what we call the christological implication that is what this teaches us about christ the church and the gospel It's lovely to be able, you know, I can, I can recall some stories, not all of them, but you know, you read something and you can recall a story or an event or an account in the Bible, but what's the implication there, you know, in terms of what's it teaching? me about Jesus what is it teaching me about the church what is it teaching me how does the gospel come into all of it there's always that in, in, um, implication and then the third level is what we call the metaphoric application and that's really the application what how does this represent and uh, so context original context gospel Christ church what does it mean how am I going to apply it how is it going to change my life how do it, does it address pain now in terms of the parables when we look at the parables um, the, 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 we're told that the parable is really a familiar story that's used to illustrate an unfamiliar truth and Jesus used the manners and custom of his time to illustrate spiritual truth so why wouldn't we do that okay someone may not be able to relate to I don't know um, so we're going out if they're not far you know if they don't know about farming but we can make it relevant today oh we can't hear all you're saying <gasps> oh that's not good that's not good that that's it's not good can, uh, can you hear me now talk to me Sandra they say that they can't hear me I can't tell. Can you hear me? Nod or or shake your head. Oh, what was the metaphorical word? I'll go back. I'll go back. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Right, brilliant. Right, when we talk about the metaphoric application, can you hear me now? Yeah, brilliant. Right, well, what it's saying there is that what this history this what we've read how will it represent in the modern world it says the modern world did we get that yeah yeah okay thank you I think what we need to do is to have some kind of sign. So if at any time you can't hear me, if you put your finger like that, thumbs down, I will know. Uh, you know that's good, but I'm glad because, yeah, otherwise I'd be 
venting on you, you wouldn't know. So we were going on to look at parables. And I was saying here that um, what Jesus did, he used the manners and the customs of his time to illustrate spiritual truths. And really, parables was his primary mode of teaching. And when we read Matthew 13, um, verse 34, and you know, I don't always like to use one scripture. I might, because of time and space, use one scripture, but we never ever build anything on one scripture. Look for a second scripture, you know, or a third scripture in, in your own time to back up, to make sure that what we're saying has a solid foundation that's how we normally you know interpret our scriptures but in matthew 13 and 34 it says all these things jesus um spake jesus unto the multitude in parables and without a parable spake he not unto them so there is an implication and i'm now on um, I'm going to go to, to verse four, uh, page four in a minute. But there is an implication here um, that it was important um, that Jesus said most of what he said was in a parable. And therefore, you know, biblical history, there's always there some spiritual realities that's there. This is where we're talking about the layers under it. Everything that you read there, look for the layers underneath. And I'm sure before I had um, talked about Abraham. I think I did that later on. A, because I use Abraham because we're all familiar with him. But if you look at him, he was a real person whom God made real promises to. And he can also represent real people to whom God made real promises. So, you know, when we're reading, we're not just looking at Abraham as a person. I'll come to that again later on. You know, when I look at angles and approaches, that there are all of these things that's there. There's a layer underneath. You know, he represents, for example, because he was, oh, your battery's running low. Okay, please excuse me, I just need, it. it's there, and we can plug it in. Oh, okay. Oh, well, let me close it. Thank you. mine it's not mine yeah yeah sorry it's yeah the 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 connections inside there i'm sorry i forgot that i was using some a different laptop i thought it was strange because my laptop has been charging all day i didn't but we've been using this one for skype so <sighs> we just need to get this on. My apologies for this. I still can't hear you, but can you hear me? Still. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay. I just didn't want it to die on us. That's brilliant. Thank you. God bless. Oh! I think it's about to die. 